Hello, everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, I will explain a recently released horror film called Dawn of the Beast. This film is based on an urban legend of Bigfoot from the northern states. The visuals of this film are a bit disturbing, so please watch at your own risk. The film starts in one northern small town. We see information that more than 200 people have claimed seeing Bigfoot since 1985. Strangely, everyone saw Bigfoot only between September 4th and October 2nd. During this time 54 people mysteriously disappeared. Locals of the town called this time period as a dead month. As during this time tourists were next to nothing. Now we see a couple, Everett and Marie, who came to camp during this month. They stayed in a cabin near the woods where Marie found a green crystal locket in the woods. Marie likes it and wears it. Later Everett goes to smoke outside the cabin where he sees something glowing. He takes a closer look, in the woods he saw some kind of creatures. He was horrified, and in panic he ran. He come across a giant creature which roars at him. As he runs from it he encounters Marie. She looked as if she was in some kind of a possessed state. Later some unknown force drags Marie into the forest. Everett runs after her, but he failed to save Marie. The story now moves forward 10 years. A cryptozoology professor named Dr. Dennis Kasdan was on a field trip with his students. Cryptozoologists study mythical creatures like Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, Yeti, the Chupacabra, the Jersey Devil, or the Mokul Membi. This field is still referred to as pseudoscience. Dr. Dennis's students were Jake, Isabella and Oz. Lily was a student of photojournalism who had come with this to complete her degree project. Isabella's boyfriend Chris was also here, who was a little soft in nature. Lily even tells this to Chris. In a nutshell, you are not really Isabella's type of guy. She will chew you raw and throw it. Meaning, here had a long history of dumping boyfriends. But Chris doesn't take Lily's advice seriously. They all go to an office outside the woods to rent a cabin in the woods. The cabin owner warns them that it is dangerous to go into the woods in the dead months, there is an evil that senses the presence of humans. These guys ignore his warning and still take the cabin on rent. Chris and Isabella settle at the cabin. From Isabella's way of talking with Chris, it was clear that she was not that interested in Chris. Where Chris seemed innocent, he truly loved Isabella and was committed. Now on the field visit, Dr. Dennis starts telling everyone about the history of Bigfoot. He asks everyone to follow the hiking trail marked in the woods. But no one listens to him. Oz, Jake and Isabella take a wrong turn to explore the forest. When Chris sees a beautiful bird, he follows it. Lily was busy taking photos for her project. Later we see Everett in the woods who was still alive. He had an eye. Lily saw him observing a large footprint. She gives him her intro and takes his photo. Everett tells her that he has come to find Bigfoot too. He warns her in a cryptic way and says such a beautiful girl should not be roaming alone in a forest. Lily thinks him as a psycho and goes back. Jake, Isabella and Oz were hiking around. Jake accidentally steps on the poop of an animal on the way, seeing that Oz calls it Bigfoot's poop. As the shit was big. LOL. As Jake was cleaning it there, he found a human skeleton. He and Isabella in horror and panic talk about reporting it to the police, but Oz stops her. He says they can report it in the evening, not right away. They start walking ahead from there. Just then Isabella notices the green crystal necklace hanging over the skeleton. She takes it out and keeps it. Alas, women and jewelry. At night everyone came back to the cabin where there was no internet at all. Isabella had to make an urgent work call for which she asked Jake for car keys from Jake. This cabin was in the middle of the woods, there was no mobile network and no landline. The nearest phone line was with the cabin owner, which was at a distance of one hour drive from here. Meaning it was far away. Oz and Dr. Dennis were discussing this Bigfoot legend while having drinks. Oz wanted to discuss the rest of the evil legends in the woods too, but Dr. Dennis didn't believe in them. He doesn't take Oz's opinion seriously. Later Dr. Dennis also starts leaving with Isabella, as he had forgotten to wish his wife for the anniversary. He forgot that date and came here. Oh man, his wife must be pissed. Anyway, Chris found an old book in the cabin which was about another urban legend from here. The Wendigo. The book had its story with creepy drawings. The book says the darkness brings with it the evil called Wendigo. It roams around the woods in hunger, its hunger never ends. In one image, he was giving a locket to a lady. 
It was further written in it that light drives away the darkness with sunrise. Here we see an image of Bigfoot with the backdrop of sunlight. All this could mean that there are two entities in these woods. Bigfoot and Wendigo. Maybe the Bigfoot is visible only during the day and the Wendigo by night. Chris gets scared by reading all this. Lily was now taking a shower wherever it sneaks in through the window. He attacks her, makes her unconscious, kidnaps her. Isabella was driving the car when a ghostly figure came in front of her. She spins the car in a panic which goes straight and hits a tree. That's when we see the same glowing-eyed creatures again. These creatures now attack Dr. Dennis and take him away. Isabella was sitting next to him, she saw this in horror. As she tried to run away from the car, some unknown entity possesses her. She starts hanging in the air while being possessed. We also saw Marie getting possessed in the first scenes in a similar way. Perhaps it was the same entity that had come back. Incidentally, Isabella had the similar crystal necklace that Marie had. That is why it is said that one should stay away from the things belonging to the dead people. That skeleton in the woods Jake found may be Marie. Now Chris goes outside to pee at night as Lily had locked the bathroom. Then Bigfoot attacks him and drags him away. That's right, the legend of Bigfoot was true here. Next morning we see Everett with Lily. He had kept Lily in his van in bondage. He says sorry to Lily as he was going to use her like a bait. He thought that Marie had been killed by the Bigfoot, hence he was here to hunt it down. Next morning we see Isabella coming back to the cabin where she was clearly in a semi-possessed state. Jake and Oz were shocked to see her. She was just repeating one phrase. I am hungry. I am really hungry. Just then we hear Chris's screaming voice, Bigfoot had knocked him off and hit him under the bushes. Jake and Oz take Chris out, and Isabella points a finger up at the mountain. There was the dead body of Dr. Dennis hanging with a pole in his mouth. These guys were petrified, and they rushed into the cabin. Chris tells everyone about Wendigo, which scares us like hell. Oz says that Wendigo is an evil spirit that preys on self-centered and selfish people. He is a cannibalistic entity that hunts humans with greed and low morals. Wendigo was also an urban legend here, which many people claim to have seen. The same thing he wanted to discuss with Dr. Dennis, but Dr. Dennis was not interested in him. Oz now talks about leaving from here soon. Lily was now missing, she didn't even have a car, and the nearest town was far away. They do not understand what to do. They start waiting for Lily in the cabin itself by locking all the doors and windows. They wait the whole day. In the evening we saw Lily and Everett who were near a tree. Everett ties Lily to that tree and takes his position in the bushes behind. Lily sees a dead body of a girl there, meaning Everett had done this before. Lily begins to relieve herself in a panic by rubbing her rope to the tree. At the cabin it was 8.33 p.m. Isabella was sleeping on her bed where we see a shadow of a horned creature. As she wakes up, she starts feeling pain, the smart screen starts showing weird results. Like, no results found four kill and consume the blood and flesh of others. Suddenly, the smart screen's front camera opened where Isabella saw her reflection. Strangely, her reflection was not normal, it was demonic, and it was laughing constantly. We now see Isabella getting completely possessed by something where her eye turns white. As the night falls, there is some movement behind Everett. Those glow-eyed creatures were fast approaching him, they attacked him this time and killed him. Lily saw all this in shock, she freed herself in a hurry and started running. In the cabin, Isabella had lost her control. Later, Oz goes to her room to check on her, but she is not there. Just then the door of the room got locked and Isabella appeared. She dropped from the ceiling where she was hanging like a bat. She had now become a cannibalistic zombie. She attacks Oz and kills him. Now Lily arrived at the cabin, she was huffing and puffing from running. Those creatures were following her. Jake breaks down upon seeing these creatures, Isabella attacks him from behind and kills him. Lily meets Chris in the cabin, she explains everything to him. Both of them start running away from the cabin with one axe and one hammer. Here Chris had no idea about Isabella's zombie condition. He tells Lily to wait for the rest of the people. Lily was the most selfish girl, she was in no mood to wait for anyone. Still, Chris insisted, and as he was checking for others, he saw Isabella eating Jake. Chers and horror runs from there, but suddenly all the glowing creatures arrive there. Lily and Chris escape the cabin by hiding, dogging and running slowly. Once out of the cabin, they tried to run like Usain Bolt, but alas they were not that fast. 
They come across Everett's corpse, from his pocket Lily steals his van's keys. The entity Wendigo was following them as soon as these guys started running towards Everett's car. The group of glow-eyed creatures attacks them. One creature uproots Lily's hand. She was in agony and died instantly there. Chris was now surrounded by those creatures. Considering his death is near, he starts to act like a hulk, he challenges those creatures. Meaning he wanted to fight till the end. But strangely, all the creatures here do not attack him, they start running away from him. The real Hulk Bigfoot was standing behind Chris. Bigfoot and Wendigo had an ancestral enmity. Bigfoot starts killing all the creatures, seeing which Chris runs away from there. He walks all night, and in the morning he sees Everett's van. As he was sitting in the car, a Bigfoot walked across the road. When he starts to turn the van on, Isabella attacks him. She was a zombie, so Chris sprinkles gasoline on her from the van and burns her. By this time Chris was exhausted, he could not even walk properly. After going some distance, a big blast occurs in Everett's van. Here we see Everett again who had turned into a zombie. That is, when Digo was now in his dead body. Everett says I come here every year in the dead month. Over the years I have killed many people. These woods have always been infamous for Bigfoot. I wanted to kill that thing. Alas, the reality was different. This locket and Wendigo was the root cause. It always hunts humans at this time. Everett now talks about eating Chris too, but Chris blows off his head with his shovel. He was lit. Later we saw a car approaching Chris, it was the cabin owner's car who gave him a lift. So friends, this is the story of the film Dawn of the Beast movie. I really like this film. Its suspense is amazing. Despite being a low-budget film, this film keeps you entertained. It was Wendigo who was haunting and killing everyone in the woods. It attacked Everett 10 years ago, but he survived. Everett believed Bigfoot to be responsible for Marie's death, but in reality it was Wendigo. Wendigo finally made him a zombie by killing him. After becoming a zombie, he understood this thing. In reality, Bigfoot was saving humans, so he did not kill Chris, but hit him in bushes. Overall, this film made by mixing two famous urban legends is quite good. The visuals are a bit disturbing, so watch at your own risk. If you have liked the video, then please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.